All right. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to have you here. My name is Lasse Schneppenheim. I have a background in energy and environmental management, and I am working in data center energy efficiency since three years now. Just as a heads up, this is not a live session. This is a recording. I unfortunately cannot be available today. Um, for your questions, one of my colleagues will be uh, ready to answer them after the, this recording. All right. When thinking about technology solving humanity's problems, the one that I come up with is digitalization. In the beginning, it was expected to be like uh, s solving it by default. Uh, you might, uh, if you probably know the phrase, um, please consider the environment before printing this email. And I think that is quite a good example. But today we know that's not the case by default. Um, the digitalization has a very strong impact on our environment as well. And this is why I want to explain in more detail today why we need to think about sustainability in digital infrastructure now and how the Sustainable Digital Infrastructure Alliance facilitates the journey towards it. Before we start off, just to make sure we are on the same page about this, um, sustain means to maintain, in this case a certain status or standard. Um, we talk about a standard of living that can be maintained for a long time without exceeding environmental, social and economic limits. And uh, in this sense, the UN has defined it as the following. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. When we look at the, in this case, simplified supply chain of digital infrastructure, we realize there are a lot of aspects to consider when we're talking about sustainability. The main categories uh, of it are hardware production, the operation of data centers and networks, software application and consumer devices and end of life uh, considerations. Within that we have flows of uh, mostly resources, energy and pollutants of course. Uh, so digitalization has a big impact on the physical world, especially when we look at the operations of data centers. Um, they require hardware and their production in the first place. They require energy, cooling, they emit waste heat and they require maintenance and a facility building that needs to be constructed. So while the whole value chain is part of digital infrastructure, we see, as I said, a lot of impact happening at the, what we call the underlying digital infrastructure, which applies to data center and network operation and its sphere of influence. This is therefore a visualization of what the underlying digital infrastructure is. You see this involves also the energy system, including the electricity grid, power plants and potential heat demand. We see there is a change, an exchange going on actually, and this kind of exchange will become more and more uh, instead of just building bilateral agreements where you purchase one service or, for example, electricity um, and then pay for it and then you're done. Um, there will be more multilateral agreements enabling business models that create value on both sides and help the ch to solve the challenges on both sides. We start seeing this when we talk about sector coupling, for example. So with this physical impact of the digital world happens exactly where this digital infrastructure is. So where a data center is situated, for example. And why is this a problem? Um, the problem is becoming increasingly aware when you look at how the demand for digital infrastructure is growing. Um, more digital services in every part of our lives are driving demand for storing and processing data. And the data centers are the engine room of the digital economy and even more though in the age of the cloud. This is why electricity usage is rising uh, in data centers. Um, this graph shows a base, uh, worse and a best case scenario. Um, numbers on these scenarios can change or can vary significantly 
depending on uh, the different studies and when they have been um, conducted that is because we are it is really dependent on efficiency measures that apply on consolidation and merger and acquisition um, phases that represent the change in this industry, the rapid change. And um, that is something that I come to later, why this is important. And efficiency measures, like I mentioned before, have and the consolidation or rather like the merger of data centers into, for example, cloud um, data centers have kept energy consumption at a certain level. Um, however, it is not certain that they these um, efficiency m uh, gains will outweigh the increase of uh, of demand um, over the long time. We expect um, demand and energy consumption to and resource consumption to grow if we don't keep working towards a more sustainable digital infrastructure. Why do we think about it now? Well. I have three good reasons. We are right in the search of a new environmental awareness. Uh, public, governmental and even the attention from the capital side is bigger than ever. And if we don't also put digital infrastructure on the map, we will end up building it with the same principles of the old age. Um, and that leads to the next point, because we want to solve problems with the tool of digitalization. Problems that have been caused by how we handled things in the f uh, before and we don't want to cause more problems the same way. So I think um, this should be the underlying value of all our actions that we do not try to create more problems by solving some. Uh, and we can discuss if we are solving more problems than we are creating new ones but I prefer not to create any or as little as possible in the first place. And as I mentioned before, we are in a time of growth and change in the industry and demand is increasing and the way the, it's, everything is structured is changing. And I think that is the ideal point of time to know or to define what desired standards there are to build this digital infrastructure, what we require them in terms of sustainability, what we require in terms of capability and accessibility. And um, that is simply easier than in a matured uh, industry. And I suggest we don't wait until the industry is matured to then um, try to change it. Another way to look at this is from this angle as well. Um, we are right in the face of two of the biggest trends right now, which are the trend towards, so towards more sustainability especially by changing to renewable energy to avoid CO2 emissions. The energy transition has been mainly focused on the producing green electricity, but to put this simply, we need to go further than this. Uh, the, then the trend of digitalization, we moved away from physical and analog forms of storing and sending information. With that, we are able to completely reshape the way our economic economy and world works. We need it for more sustainability and to progress in the energy transition as well as for solving many other problems such as social inequality, uh, understanding our world better in terms of scientific uh, research or to ease the already ongoing climate change. If we follow these trends um, and progress in them successfully, we will end up in a smart and sustainable future, enabling a smart energy system based on renewable energy that optimizes automatically and uses resources efficiently and comprehensively, supporting thereby innovation by making digital resources accessible to everyone so that innovators can use these resources to solve our problems even better. So digitalization can support the energy system, right? That's what I just said. But the needed digital infrastructure so far is rather increasing the demand for more energy and therefore its impact on the environment. So how can we change this? We believe there are actually ways to fundamentally change this so that the digital infrastructure is not just having an, like is not just a burden but actually uh, supporting the energy system of the future. And I have a few examples and concepts how this can be done. For example, we need to find ways to cool efficiently and use the waste heat from data centers. This is not just needed to um, reduce the carbon impact, it is needed to use the waste heat because 
we will demand or we will have a higher demand for CO2 free heat in the future. Um, we currently talk about the energy transition <coughs> as an electricity transition, but actually it also involves mobility and the heat sector. And with the change away from burning fossils, we have less sources that are actually fossil free for heat. So we need to learn to use waste heat sources like for data centers, but also from uh, uh, other industrial processes. Then we need to look deeper into how we, we supply data centers effectively with renewable energy. Just by finding a, a provider that sells a tariff with renewable energy, that doesn't help. We need to uh, be become a better customer. Um, purchasing renewable energy in a way that actually incentivizes building new renewable energy and also um, the, reacting maybe to the fluctuating supply of renewable energy in a certain way. For this, server utilization and their management can help. Currently, servers run on very low utilization rates sometimes in, in data centers, still using a lot of energy. And uh, by actually optimizing them, for example, using those uh, low demand times to ma maybe run other processes, um, like scientific research or rendering processes, can actually um, increase the efficiency of the overall system. And this capability to change and shift loads can help us to react on renewable energy fluctuations and therefore um, make the data center a little bit more flexible. Fourth, we need to find good locations for data centers. So far, they are being, they are being, bu being built uh, directly into urban centers or into the major hubs um, where they have a scarcity in space, but also more importantly, they have a scarcity in renewable energy. It's really hard to supply these centers uh, on these uh, really dense um, metropolitan areas with enough renewable energy that often comes from rural areas. So um, does every data center really need to be built directly in the middle of the um, Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam or Paris region? Probably not. And um, the, uh, we can move s certain data centers certainly to a uh, um, to other locations where there is renewable energy available and CO2 forms. That does not just include, for example, um, Nordic areas, but also within the Central European countries or Southern European countries. There are areas that are better suited than the metropolitan areas. And fifth, um, uh, one topic that I really like is what can you do with alternative forms of emergency power supply? So data centers require aggregates uh, or re require units for emergency power supply. Mostly they are based on diesel generators and diesel generators, of course, you don't want them to be running more than needed um, because they cause emissions, not just CO2 emissions, but also um, dust and other forms of uh, emissions that are bad for the, uh, for the area actually around it. So you want to avoid it. But imagine you have a, you have a emergency power supply system that has the same capacity as um, actually the data center cons uh, energy consumption and you could run it whenever you want not just in emergency cases so if you run them for example on renewable hydrogen you could actually help um, the grid by being s like a storage system for them and if there is a, a, a low supply of renewable energy at certain times when there's little wind and little solar you can turn on the um, the emergency power system and supply green energy from the hydrogen tank. The, so these are just a few examples and as you see they are based um, strongly on the cooperation with other sectors and this is why we formed an alliance of like-minded organizations who drive the sustainable transformation of digital infrastructure. Creating a sustainable digital infrastructure that has zero negative of impact on the environment while driving the competitiveness of the sector. Our mission is that we are the catalyst for the industrial cooperation. Um, together with our members, individuals and governments, we measure the environmental impact of the digital economy, we promote a roadmap towards 
economically and ecologically sustainable digital infrastructure. We do this by combining the pillars of compute, power and network into a unified voice represented by the SDIA. And we promote the sustainable digital infrastructure that underpins the digital economy and build the roadmap towards net positive digital infrastructure. Thereby driving research and commercial implementation on new technologies to reach the targets. We do this together with our members, a network of companies and organizations who share the SDIA's vision on sustainability in digital infrastructure and represent the entire value chain. And that is really a strength of this alliance. With that being said, thank you very much for joining in. I know it was a quick and vivid presentation and I hope that it has caught some uh, attention for our work and its importance in these days. In this case, we would love to hear from you. Join the discussion with us and our members. We are looking forward to it. If you want to dive deeper into the topics, I recommend listening to Mohan Gandhi presenting our roadmap um, to sustainable digital infrastructure in 2030 or many of the other experts that are presenting during this conference. Thank you. Bye.